It's another Manly Monday, and this Manly Monday, yes, we're having a bit of fun with Team Bear. I'm going to teach you how to be the bear, which stands for brother with emotional availability and regulation. Do you like what I did there? Yes, you do. I know you do. Join Team Bear. Team Bear wants you. Yes. Now I know people are going to be so angry at this, and that's the thing. Ask yourself, is this really worth getting upset over? Really worth getting upset over considering Team Bear is how to listen to empathize instead of listening to argue. And this is significant because there's been a lot of talk about men being logical and fixers and reasonable uh, rational and science just says that's not true it's not true of people and men are people that's why we talked about the emotional elephant versus the emotional rider sorry the the logical rider a few weeks ago people have emotions for a reason and computers which are completely logical algorithms make terrible moral decisions because they don't have compassion. They don't have empathy and pure reason. Oh, yes, I know that's an, a, a, a Kantian concept, but pure reason just does not exist. We formulate our opinions and, and, if you read the book, The Righteous Mind by Jonathan Haidt, he talks about this, that the vast majority of decisions are made based on, we have a feeling and then we backfill a rationale to explain the feeling. And this is not a bad thing as long as you are careful. And that's where empathy first, arguing second comes into play. And that's why you want to be the bear a brother with emotional availability and regulation. Now, let's do the help support this channel thing first because I'll let people process that. Some people are not going to find this funny. I find it very funny as a representative of Team Man. Remember, I am on Team Man. I would choose the man in the forest. So don't, you don't have to, you don't have to persuade me. You don't have to convince me. But I'm going to teach you how to be the bear. Brother with emotional availability and regulation. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone can use it but can't afford it. So many people are working through the man versus bear thing. Coffee.com slash Leanna K. And I do empathize with men who are stung by this whole man versus bear thing. It is difficult to absorb the idea that the archetypical man is a predator. I think we can all acknowledge that that is what post-war masculinity, by post-war masculinity, I mean the masculine construct that has existed since the conscription in World War I and World War II. That is still the paradigm we're we're functioning under and that that went wild in the 80s after america had to withdraw from vietnam after america lost that war uh of communist containment meaning they didn't contain communism th we got this explosion in beefcake cinema rambo um terminator you know Chuck Norris, all these like really Rambo's the exception in terms of emotionless, but the whole, you know, Schwarzenegger aesthetic was this stone faced, muscular kind of killer right now. Of course, the Terminator is not the hero in the first Terminator movie, but still. And um, First Blood is not well understood in that way. I I'm a big fan of Sylvester Stallone movies, especially the Rocky movies. But First Blood and John Rambo 
are also excellent films in terms of characterization. Um, the other Rambo movies went kind of off the rails. Um, and, you know, we don't talk about Rocky Five. Uh, but the thing about Stallone movies is, I mean, you can almost compare and contrast Rocky and Rambo because John Rambo's messed up. Messed up, dude. Right? Not the bear. Rocky is the bear. He does have a lot of emotional availability. He's he's not a smart guy, but he's a very caring guy. See also Kiryu Kajima from the Yakuza series. Kiryu is the bear. Kiryu has a ton of empathy, a ton of emotional availability for people. He helps the hostess girls. He is nice to children. You know, he will take people where they are, even if he doesn't immediately understand or agree, as long as certain moral principles are not violated. And that is what emotional empathy is, sorry, emotional availability is in a nutshell. When you hear somebody say, be more present, it means being open to understanding, empathizing, and reciprocating the emotions of other people. I had a conversation with a guy last week about the man bear thing. We'd we'd had a bit of a spar back and forth. And I said to him, look, I want you to make sure that I, I want to, I want you to know that I had that conversation with you because I know you're a good guy and you had a strong emotional reaction to that. And that's, you know, you said some things that weren't in character and that's okay. And he apologized for his comments. I said, no, no, no. I appreciate that. However, this is me telling you it was okay. You had feelings. Your feelings were valid. Okay, no, until he went, okay, I get it. Like I was like, no, no, it's okay. Uh, we, you know, all good. That is being emotionally available, setting the content of the debate aside when someone is clearly upset. And obviously you can't do things like that in a pre-recorded YouTube video, which is why I do not understand the practice of insulting people in YouTube comments. The thing I love about Kiryu in the Yakuza games, the Like a Dragon games, is that he's all about how you show up. It doesn't matter how anybody else is behaving. Um, Kiryu has his code. And Kiryu has the way he treats people. And Kiryu's treatment of people is a reflection of Kiryu, not his reflection about whether he likes the person or not. He is decent to people because he is decent. People don't have to earn his decency. They have to lose it. And then the shirts come off, right? There's the the wise cure you music where where he drops some like truth bombs and then the shirt comes off and then they fight. But that's not cure you's go to, right? And the same thing about, you know, in Rocky with that um growing friendship with Apollo Creed, they show more and more. I mean, Rocky and Apollo couldn't be any more different, but Rocky respects his rival. He doesn't hate his rival. And that is consistent throughout the series that he's not, you know, he's not one of the bad men. He is a boxer, but it's all about going the distance. It's not about pummeling the other guy into paste and you know destroying him in the ring it's it's the test right I have the tigers going through her head I know it rising up to the challenge of a rival right now one of the ways to be emotionally available is to keep things light the reason I inject humor into these discussions is one so you know 
ch- a little of a chuckle relieves the tension. It's like, look, we're not smashing into each other here. We're having a conversation, right? Whereas, you know, <laughs> Song and I had a whole conversation about why slashing up, you know, sexualizing Disney movies is just so wrong, which many, many people were like, okay, that 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 was hilarious. You get angry, 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 angry. How can you be angry after, like, a pervy Lion King joke, you know? And unless, you know, you're aroused by the Lion King. Let's move on. Okay, see joke. Joke. Um The point is an an emotional availability and an emotional regulation strategy is making sure you've still got a sense of humor about things. I have a rule for myself because I am the bear. I've been saying from the beginning of this thing, I am the bear. I'll be an honorary brother with emotional availability and regulation. I am tomboy on Two Men Talking. But if I can make a joke about something, I know I'm not consumed by it. I know I'm, it's like I don't have the bit in my teeth. I'm not, the elephant's not charging. I can joke about it, therefore I can regulate and I can have a conversation where something might hit me a little bit sideways and I won't totally lose it. That's my test. Everybody's got their own. But it's very important to have these strategies so you can become the bear, brother with emotional availability and regulation. Now, emotional regulation. Because I'm going back and forth, I should define emotional regulation. I use a slightly different definition based on my own successes and failures in this, in this area. Because emotional um, resilience and distress tolerance are two pillars of DBT, um, dialectical behavior therapy. And... I find it quite useful, but I had to tweak elements of it because sometimes we do have a big emotional response, no matter how much work we do. One of the things about PTS is you are going to get triggered. That D is going to pop up every so often. And it's about, all right, we, we are here now, despite our our best um best efforts otherwise we gotta do the plan we know works no excuses you do not have the right to suddenly start ripping people's heads off and behaving bad irrational you know you're triggered You know you are not yourself right now. No excuses. And that sounds like a real hard-ass thing, but it's not. Because excuses are not reasons. Excuses are excuses. Having a trauma response, there's a reason for that. Using that trauma response as an excuse to be an asshole is not a reason, it's an excuse. And too many people make those excuses. And this does exist on the the spectrum of the, the precursors for abusive behavior. Uh, one of the real run like hell elements of, you know, this person is potentially abusive. Um, Is that blaming the victim thing? You made me. I had no choice. There's a lot of entitlement, a belief you can control other people, a belief that this is how people get what they want. And this is learned behavior. One of the things that is 
hammered into you, at least the route I took. Um, and personally, I think it's the only one that really works long term is that owning your choices always feels better than feeling like you have no choice. And one of the things I know I have to do is limit my exposure to people who in are, are in that state of, I had no choice, they made me. That's just me. Other people may be better with that, but that's a real, um, it's a real bad headspace for me to be in. Because some days, you know, you would just love to knock a motherfucker around. We're getting back into diss track territory, right? And I mean, that that's why I, I, I made the video about diss tracks, because you're talking about you know, hip hop culture comes from neighborhoods like the one I grew up in where there was a certain, and it wasn't just the men. The men got more pressure for this, but the girls I grew up around brawled a lot too. You were expected to, if someone disrespected you, you had to make them feel it. And there were reasons for that, but ultimately that is not, that is a survival tactic. That is not going to do you well in, we'll say higher social economic brackets, right? And so teaching and, and, and to go deeper into this, that comes from a trauma response. Feeling like you constantly have to be prepared for violence is is a form of hypervigilance. And that's why we spend so much time, effort and money in those communities teaching youth how to name their feelings and connect with them and develop alternative regulation strategies. I don't like to call it a cope because cope is is temporary regulating means it processes. You're not just suppressing it. You are processing your feelings so you're not walking around angry and suppressed all the time. And yeah, there was a time I was angry or scared all the time. Possibly the first two decades, maybe three of my life were spent that way. So, you know, a lot of people think, I don't know what it's like. I absolutely know what it's like. And, you know, that's why I am the bear. I am the bear. And we don't know what bear means. Brother with emotional availability and regulation. Right, right. And emotional regulation does not mean you never have strong feelings. No, no. We all have strong feelings. But things like perspective taking, challenging your interpretations, reframing the meaning of situations, and that reframing the meaning of situations is super critical to being the bear. Because this whole man versus bear thing has all been about how people frame the response. It's a study in assumptions, hence... It's a trolley problem. One guy last week was like, I was so relieved when you said, it's a trolley problem. There's no, like, he was just like, yes. And if you, the whole purpose of previously doing trolley problems back when you were allowed to challenge students in education was to show how a change of one variable can change your response. And, you know, the classic one is, do you sacrifice six people or one? Most people are like, oh, well, the one. You know, if that's a binary choice, six, you save net five lives. What if that one person is your mother? And then it comes down to how much you like your mother. And then you get into these philosophical systems of altruism. And then we get into, you know, the ending of the first Spider-Man game where... 
do you save one person who means a great deal to you or do you save everybody else? And there, the answers, if you are uncomfortable with the answer, that's when you're supposed to ask yourself, why? Why does this make you uncomfortable? And if the idea, no, I'd save my mother, not the six people. Some people are like, nope, I stand by that. Great. If not, why? Because that speaks to your core values. And it's amazing how many people I work with when I say, what are your values? What are your core values? And they're like, I don't know. And we actually do an exercise where I give them a list to draw from. And the next time we meet, they have a list of 10. Sometimes they can narrow it down to three on their own. Sometimes I'll go, okay, well, these two are sort of similar and these two are sort of similar. So here's our sort of derived root. These are your top three values. These are the ones that if you're on the right track, you are living in accordance with these values. If you, you know, if you're not on the right track, you are not living in accordance with those values. And it makes decision making much easier when you can, you know, sort of summon up those values and go, what choice here is in accordance with my values? And that, the reason that helps your emotional regulation is that it shifts the meaning of an exchange that may go poorly to this per say this person is angry at me well I must have done something wrong or they're a bad person and you know two this person is angry at me but to do what I'd have to do to have them not be angry would be violating my my core values and I'm not prepared to do that and one of those things is the idea that everybody's responsible for their own emotions everybody should care about somebody else's emotions validating emotions costs you nothing and gains you everything you don't have to agree with a person's position to validate their emotions and that's where people keep going wrong on this man versus bear thing. And it's both ways, right? It's, there There was a, a guy, I talked about this, that, you know, I, I kicked from my Discord server because he was solidly on Team Man. So, like, we were, well, he no, he was solidly on, um, understand, yes, understand, I completely understand why, um, women feel this way and he was a complete creeper in his personal life and just you know just because he was quote unquote saying the right thing on the surface didn't mean I wasn't going to call him on his bullshit because I knew he had some of that stuff to work on and did it cause a big flare up sure but I wasn't going to let that guy just sit there and bullshit, you know? I, I spent <laughs> I spent too many years biting my tongue around lefty dudes like that who knew all the right things to say and they were absolute, complete hypocrites in their personal life. And the minute you said something that, poked their feelings they just heel turned on you and became complete gaslighty invalidating you know controlling jackasses they were not the bear they were not a brother with emotional availability and regulation because being the bear is not about agreeing with a viewpoint being the bear is understanding a viewpoint, even when you don't agree, as as I, I do, I don't pick the bear in that scenario. 
and I've made multiple videos explaining why, and people still here come here and yell at me because I'm not condemning bear people, but I am the bear, <laughs> right? Brother with emotional availability and regulation. I understand and accept why people answer a binary hypothetical this way. The, the series of assumptions they make are it's, you know, the bear and then in their heads. I mean, look at look at the opening of Fallout, right? Look at the guy that they set up as, you know, Lucy was like, oh, he's so hot. He's so cute. And to me, it's like, well, that guy looks like a rapist that just got out of prison. I was correct, right? But that's, he's supposed to be hot guy, but also dangerous guy. The fact that we're in an era of um, unshaven with man bun, the man bun's kind of declined, but you know what I mean? Like the shaggy guy. And there's sort of a brutish phase, you know, all these wannabe Vikings walking around who know nothing about actual Viking gender relations at the time. It's, it's not what a lot of people think. Um, that we're in a mode Right. And I think that if we weren't in that place in terms of the zeitgeist, the answers might be different. But right now we do exist in a time where, you know, guys who are violent, guys who, but, you know, they're violent against the right people. Right. But there is this thing in every woman's head. What if he turns on me? And I am not one of these people who I want a guy tough enough to protect me. That's so not me. I get so pissed off when guys try to protect me instead of, you know, there's a difference between protecting me and having my back. Having my back, I super appreciate because that's reciprocal. Protecting me, perhaps it can be reciprocal, but that's, that's having your back. To me, protect me is one-sided. Having your back, it goes both ways. So that's my paradigm, right? I'm not in this, oh, I need a big, strong man to protect me from the dangerous world. I am not terribly feminine. And I don't judge women who are. I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just not my thing. And I can't conform to feminine gender norms that encourage women to want a big, strong man who can protect them, you know, keep them safe from the world. That, that's the, the right answer. But a man strong enough to protect you from the bad men is also strong enough to hurt you if he does a heel turn. And that's the reality that women live in. I get that. And I guess I'm fortunate enough to just not find that stuff appealing. I don't know. Um, but I understand it. And like I said, I'm fortunate enough to not be in that box. But I understand that that's, that's just because I'm happy with who I am. If a woman is happy with who they are... And they want the barbarian, like Song does. Okay. I'm good with that. I, I see the appeal. I mean, that big muscles, I, I understand a lot of people like those. It is not strange. I am the one who is strange. And that's where the self-compassion element comes into the emotional availability uh, and... Um, and regulation. Be the bear. Be a brother with emotional availability and regulation. And I am accepting of my weird bits. I know a lot of people are not. And you can't be available 
and regulated around other people. If you don't like yourself or if you think you are somehow lacking, we all have things we want to work on. We all have things we want to be better at, but that's not the same as feeling inadequate. And an internet fight over man versus bear, if you like yourself, shouldn't make you feel unsafe because of the disagreement. I mean, God, every woman I know has a different answer than me. I'm the lone team man in my friend circle. And that's okay. That's okay. Because it's a hypothetical. Just because something's a minority opinion doesn't mean, at at least in my circle, doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. And that is, I think, the work we need to do in men's spaces. It's getting that self-compassion, getting that, no, you really are cool the way you are. Uh, and, and where that starts is validating feelings. And the only person you can control regarding validating feelings is yourself. So be the bear, brother with emotional availability and regulation, and be open to, okay, yeah, and if you don't, if you don't really understand why somebody feels the way they, they, they do, go, why do you feel that way? The way I do with people who tell me off week in and week out around here. Um, you know, it, on Friday, I deliberately focused on a comment that I thought was in good faith. I did not focus on the ones I thought were obvious trolls. And one commenter went, why do you only focus on the negative comments? It's like, I'm not going to sit here and read a bunch of comments that agree with me on a feedback session. I'm going to focus on the people that disagreed in a way I thought was coming at me straight because I respect that. I respect people who don't stoop to ad hominems. I don't want to encourage that, right? Because I'm not going to reward the obvious sign of dysregulation and a a lack of emotional awareness that's displayed by people who name call. And do I name call occasionally? Yeah, I do. Partially because, you know, the guy's done it to me six times. And so it's like the one little, you know, the one little slip. They aren't my best moments. I try not to. Every so often, I'm just kind of, eh. I try to minimize them. I go easy on myself when I don't, right? Sometimes you just, it's too good a line. Like the one Mary just uses all the time. You think you are a wit. You're only half right. I mean, that's just too good a line, right? But notice there, I said, yeah, I try to minimize that. That's behavior I try to avoid. But it's also not the end of the world when I do do it. If I get a bad result, if, you know, I never do it intending to truly upset people. I tend to do it to trolls because I think they're just having a go at me. If somebody gets really upset by something I say, I do, if, if it seems like they are legitimately wounded, I do tend to say, look, man, I didn't think that was going to hurt you that way. I never would have done it if I knew. I'm sorry. They usually don't acknowledge that. Sometimes they do calm down. But I don't care if they acknowledge it. Because if I go ahead based on an assumption that this guy's not coming at it from, you know, deep in his feelings. And it turns out, no, he was arguing it very badly but it was coming from a sincere place. Well, of course I'm going to own that assumption that turned out to be wrong. That cost me nothing. And that's what happens when you have that self-compassion at the core of being the bear, brother with emotional availability and regulation. Because if you do that for other people, 
you can expect that from others as well. A lot of people want the other person to be the bigger person first. And that is not the bear. That is not having emotional availability and regulation. That is actually expecting the other person to be the bigger person. And that isn't going to get you ideal results. Because the people who are willing to be accountable will look for people who are also accountable. And they're not going to bother with the people who aren't. That's how you can control what kind of social interactions you get on a daily basis outside of, you know, social media that you have to do to promote things. If you're surrounded by a bunch of people that are waiting for the other person always to go first, of course, that's going to be an invalidating environment. If you're the one that's like, I'm going to go first. And if I notice me going first and the other person going not at all too many times, well, that person's not a bear. You know, that is not a brother with emotional availability and regulation. And then you have to decide whether you want that person in your life or quite as close to you in your life. And that is how you get a validating social circle. That is how you feel like you matter as a man in the world, developing relationships that say you matter. The world doesn't know you. The world doesn't care. Team Bear cares, right? When you have a team of brothers with emotional availability and regulation, you will feel like you matter. Give it a try. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Or buy a one-time Leanna Care session for someone who can use it but can't afford it if you want individual attention on this, developing your own strategies to be the bear, coffee.com slash Leanna K. There's a contact form in the description box for signups for Leanna Care sessions. Thanks for watching Manly Mondays.